so good, God. It's a simple word, oh God, but the phrase is infinity, Lord God, you're so good. You're so, so good to us, God. Oh God, we can never, ever say, Lord God, that you haven't been good, Lord God. In our darkness, Lord God, you've been good. Lord God, in our hearts, Lord God, when we were, Lord God, going other ways, you've always been good, Lord God. When we were dealing with grief, Lord God, you've always been good. When we've been in pain, you've always been good, Lord God. When we were homeless, you've always been good. When we've been attempting to find better jobs, you've always been good. Lord God, when finances weren't right, you've always been good. And so, God, we're going to praise your name today. Today, Lord God, we're going to worship you today, Lord God. Oh God, we're going to give you everything that we got today in the name of a Jesus, Lord God, because you're good, God. You're good, you're good, you're good, good God. Oh God, you're so good. You're so good, good God. Oh God, you're good. Oh God, you're good. Oh God, and there's nothing that anyone can ever tell us anything different, Lord God. And Lord God, not because of one thing, but because of all things, Lord God. We have experienced the goodness of you, Lord God, and so we'll share that testimony, but no one's going to tell us that God isn't real because we know, Lord God, we ran into you on a daily basis, God, and we know that you're good, God. Oh, God, you're so good. You're so great, Lord God, and we're so grateful for you, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh, God, you're so good. Oh, God, you're so good, God. And, oh, God, before we go into worship, Lord God, we're going to hand everything over to you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We're going to hand over, Lord God, the work week coming up. We're not worried about it. We're handing it over to you. We're handing over finances to you. We're handing over our burdens over to you. Lord God, we're not giving up dead cattle at the altar. We're giving up, Lord God, our problems, Lord God. We're giving up our worries and anxiety, Lord God. We're going to hand over everything to you, Lord God, and release it, Lord God, and worship you like we never worshiped you before. Lord God, we're going to come before you today, Lord God. God, emptying our souls over to you in the name of a Jesus, Lord God. And in that time, Lord God, we're going to have faith, Lord God, and trust, Lord God, that you're going to do everything you said you're going to do, every promise that you've declared in that word, Lord God. We're going to believe it on today for ourselves, Lord God, for our leaders, Lord God, for our children, our family, our friends, Lord God, our foes, Lord God. We're going to believe it for each and every person today in the name of a Jesus, Lord God. We're going to worship you, God. We're going to worship you. And so as we prepare for worship, if you can, stand up on your feet as our worship team is going to lead us into worship. And so, Lord God, we close this out by saying we love you, Lord. We trust you and we hand it all over to you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we declare all these things to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I just want to welcome everyone in the building to worship alongside with us this morning. I want to invite everything, everyone that hath breath to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to worship him this morning like, like he is the God of the universe. Hallelujah. We're going to worship him this morning like he is our father. Hallelujah. This song says, you have made me glad. I'll give thanks to you, Lord, and sing praise to your name, O Most High. I'll declare your love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. For you, for you, O oh Lord, have made me glad. I will sing for joy at the works of your hand and rejoice in what you have done. I'll give thanks to you, Lord, and sing praise to your name, O oh Most High. I'll declare, I'll declare your love in the morning and your faithfulness by night for you, for you, oh Lord, have made me glad. I will sing for joy at the works of your hand and rejoice in what you have done. 
and rejoice in what you have done. Oh Lord, how great are your works! Oh Lord, how great are your works! Oh Lord, how great are your works! You have made.
Living in the overflow. The bound are now set free. Everywhere we go, we see the victory. The victory. The victory. The victory. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. I am living. I am living in the overflow.
Forgiveness is in this place. His arms are wide open. Surely Jesus is in this place. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. We're singing to God. you for meeting us in this place. Thank you for meeting us in this place. Hallelujah. 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 This next song is Endless Praise. We can't wait for eternity because we're going to continue singing, singing how holy he is. I can't wait for eternity. Join the song they're already singing. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Just a bow. Just a bow down before your throne. See your face. See your face. I cry out because you're holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Jesus, King of Kings, Jesus, Majesty, I can't wait for eternity. 
Join the song they're already singing. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Oh, just to bow down. Just to bow down before your throne. See your face. See your face. I cry out because you're holy, holy, holy are you. Jesus, King of Kings. Sing it out this morning. Sing it unto me. Jesus, Majesty. Jesus, King of Kings. On your Majesty. worship with us this morning. Worthy, worthy, worthy Lord. Worthy, worthy, worthy Lord. The next part you guys
guys can join in and sing with me. Worthy is the Lamb. Sing it out. Worthy is the Lamb. It's a simple song. You know you, you are, are holy. Sing out with us. Holy. The Lord wants to hear you. Are you Lord God Almighty? father no need to worry he's righteous he's a just father yes he is. Yes, it's he all is. gonna come Hallelujah. together he's a just father he sees and he knows you may wonder what in the world but he sees and he knows yes, yes, he's he a does. righteous father Hallelujah. he's also loving but he's righteous he's also kind but he's righteous Hallelujah. He's a just God. He still sits on the throne. He's still reigning above all of our situations. He's still reigning above all of our circumstances. You may think, oh, how did that happen? But he's righteous. Hallelujah. He is just. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We cannot fathom. Hallelujah. We don't understand, and it's okay. We're not to understand. We're just here to trust him. Trust the Lord with all of our heart. Trust the Lord with all of our heart. Sometimes it's not easy. I'm not saying it's always easy. We just have to trust him because he's righteous. He's faithful. He's loving. He has so many attributes. Whatever you need, that's who God is. Whatever you're going through, that's who God is. That's who God can be in your life. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and they, my foes, they fell and stumbled. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And all the days of my life to behold 
the beauty of the Lord. For in the time of trouble, for he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me, and he shall set me on high upon a rock. God, we bless your name today. We praise you, we honor you, we magnify you, God. We lift you up and we praise you, Lord God. Just as we've been singing on today, God, you are holy, you are worthy, you are righteous, you are true, you are faithful, you are just. Lord God, you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. You're Lord of this house, oh God. You're Lord of our lives, oh God. You're Lord of our families, oh God. You're Lord of our neighborhoods, oh God. You're Lord of our cities, oh God. You're Lord of our states, oh God. You're Lord of this nation, Father God. And we make you Lord of this world. God, we call to you, Lord God, because we are desperate for you, Lord God. God, we can't live without you. Lord, we need you because we need you, God. There's no one else that can come. There's no one else that can save. There's no one else that can protect. There's no one else that can provide. There's no one else that can shield like you do, God. So we call upon your name. We bless your holy and your righteous name. We love you with every fiber of our being. We surrender ourselves to you, Father God. We surrender our lives to you, Father God. We give you ourselves, oh God, because no one else deserves it but you. You deserve the glory, God. You deserve the honor, God. You deserve our praise, oh God. You deserve it all, Lord God. We give it all back to you, Father God. We give it all back to you, oh God. We worship you, God. We praise you, God. And we honor you on today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us in perfect peace, Lord God, as we kept our minds stayed on you. We thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you are doing. We thank you, God, that your banner over us is love. We thank you, God, for protecting us through these times. Father God, I pray over those who have hurt their hearts, Lord God, no matter where it may be coming from. Lord, I pray now, God, that you, Lord God, be their strength, oh God, that you be their joy as they're walking through these times, Father God, as some people are feeling uncertain, God, about the next steps in their lives, Father, I pray, God, that you would be a lamp to their feet and a light unto their path, oh Father God, that you would guide them, Holy Spirit, into all truth. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, over those who have broken hearts, oh God. I pray, God, as you are the mender, as you are the healer, as you are the balm of Gilead, we pray now, God, that you bring healing to their broken hearts now. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, over those who need healing in their physical bodies. I pray now, Father, that you heal them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Lord God, heal them in their back pain. Heal them in their knee pain. Heal them in their joint pain. Heal them, Lord God, from cancer and disease. Heal them, Father God, from high blood pressure and diabetes. Heal them, Father God, from cholesterol, Lord. Heal them, Father God, from sarcoidosis, God. Heal them, Father God, from COVID, Lord. Heal them from monkey virus, Lord God. Heal them now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we go out to the nations, not just the United States, but to all of the world, oh God. Oh, Father God, and we speak healing virtue to flow in the name of Jesus. We speak healing, God, over divisive hearts, oh God. We speak healing, Father God, over blood issues, oh God. We speak healing, God, over legions and open wounds, Father God. We speak healing, God, over broken bones in the name of Jesus. We speak healing, God, over alopecia in the name of Jesus. We speak healing, God, over neck pains, oh God. We speak healing, Father God, over flat-footedness, God. We speak healing, God, over nostril issues, God. We speak healing, Father.
Father God, over migraines now in the name of Jesus. We speak healing, Father God, over ears, Lord God, that are clogged. We speak healing, Father God, over everything, Lord God, is bothering people. We speak healing over arthritis now in the name of Jesus. We speak healing, Lord God. Healing, 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 healing. Come forth now in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Come forth now, oh God, and heal because by the stripes of Jesus, your word says that we're already healed, that we're already whole. And so we speak it and we declare it now. We take authority over those things that are holding us bound. God, I pray that you break chains right now. Tear down walls, Lord God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, break through, Father God. I pray right now, God, that you break through spiritual darkness, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, tormenting spirits that are tormenting your people, it must cease in the name of Jesus. We speak healing now. We speak healing now. We speak healing now. In the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you have your way during the rest of this time. Father God, we pray over Minister Thomas. He's preparing to prepare and deliver the word. God, I pray that as he comes forth, Lord God, that you give him even more revelation than you already have. I pray, Father God, that you open the eyes of his understanding, that he may deliver what you have for him to speak to us on today. We pray, God, that you open our ears to hear directly from your throne room, oh God. I pray now, God, that you open our hearts to receive from you, Father God, that we may live our life according to you that we may live our lives, Lord God, throughout this week that represents you, Father God. As we open our mouths, let us represent you, Father God. When we take our walks, let us represent you, Father God. In our actions, Lord God, let us represent you. God, I keep hearing they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk, they will uh, I don't know the rest of it right now, but God, I pray now, God, that we will soar with you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, they that wait on the Lord, 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 God, you shall renew our strength. God, what a powerful word from last week. As we wait on you, Father God, and we don't allow distractions to come in the way, God. But Lord God, we serve you. And we seek you. Because your word says when we seek you, you will find you. When we seek you with all of our hearts. God, we bless your name. We praise your name and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our praise team today was just calling on the name of the Lord, and they were just saying, holy, holy is the Lord, holy is the Lord. I just felt that we needed to take 30 seconds, and we just need to tell the Lord how holy he is. Just stand up and just begin to raise your voices and just call, just say, holy is the Lord. 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 Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord.
We have to tell him he's holy. We have to declare and decree that he's holy. Oh, you're holy, God. Oh, you're holy, Lord. You're holy, God. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, God. You are holy, Lord. No rock that got to cry out. You are holy, Lord, God. Holy are you, Lord. 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 Oh, God, we just bless you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, God. Holy are you, Lord, God. Oh, God, you said the whole earth. The whole earth is filled with your glory. Oh, God. He said, Holy God. The angels in heaven, they are crying, Holy.
God is coming upon. And there was a rainbow around the throne. An appearance like an ember. And around the throne were 24 elders. And on the throne, I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white. And they had crowns of gold on their head. And from the throne, Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass, like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes in front and back. The first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature was like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes and around and within them, and they did not rest day or night saying, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, who is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sit on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast down their crowns before them saying you are worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will, they exist and were created. You're worthy, O oh God. Worthy, O oh God. You're worthy, O oh God. You're worthy, O oh God. You're worthy, O oh God. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb, be glory, dominion, and power. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. you, God. We love you, Lord. Lord, we love you, Lord. Yes, we do, God. We love you, God.
to God. We love you, God. is the turning point because sometimes God can see us in our faithfulness and our fruitfulness and he can begin to bless us and God can bless us so much that it, sometimes we can get distracted. I know I did that. And we can start focusing on the things that he blessed us with. It's not enough just to receive the blessings of God. The God of the blessings. And sometimes we just have to stop and just take time and just say, God, you're holy. You're worthy. And God, I appreciate what you're doing for me, God. I thank you, God. And God, I love you. I love you, God. I love you, God. I love you, God. God, I love you.
Father, I pray that you would bless your word. That you would bless your word. We honor you on today, God. We honor you on today, God. Worthy, worthy, worthy. While I was back there praying, should be channel two, Mike. I couldn't help but think about how God moves. Now, I gotta be, I gotta be honest. As the sound guy, I kept thinking, what song should I be playing right now? How should I be, what should I be? Is there a segue? Is there something that I need at this point? And only one person in this room could tell you that I was back there Googling different songs and lyrics and stuff like that. And every time I thought, hey, I'm going to play this, God said no. See, because the, the instrumental that was playing is called Holy Spirit. And it's off of an album called Refreshing. And even, even the message that I have today is called the effects of the Pentecost. And I think what God was doing was making those effects real to each and every single one of us today. See, because a refreshing is what we need. A renewing is what we need. Yeah, we've, we've got other stuff to do. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But I feel like it's important for us to understand and know why that refreshing and that renewing is so important. Now, just as Pastor Herman and I started talking about last week about Pentecost and how you need to be prepared. And sometimes God is just waiting on us to be at peace, to accept the peace that he's given us. And as we, as we dive further into this, you know, I want to I start by Rereading Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 2. I know we've been standing for a while, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask y'all to stand again real quick just so we can get through these couple of scriptures. It says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. Father, I pray that you would speak through me this morning and that you would just move, Father God. God, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, for being in this house today. And I pray, Father God, that not only would your presence continue to dwell here, but that it would rest on each and every single one of us and go with us wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I firmly believe that there are times in our lives where God has to tell us to just stop. To just stop. Whatever you're doing, whatever it is you're worrying about, whatever it is you're concerned with, the things that you're dwelling on, just stop. See, because when, when we get distracted with things, then one of the main benefits of the Holy Spirit takes longer and longer. See, because one of the first effects of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is that it changes our minds. And if we don't stop long enough to listen to what God is trying to tell us, then we can miss what he's trying to say. See, because before we have the Holy Spirit living within us, we're carnally minded. But as soon as the Holy Spirit comes to rest on us, we become spiritually minded. See, our motivation without the Holy Spirit is selfish ambition. Now, if you don't believe me, I'm going to give you an example. Right before Jesus was arrested, what were the disciples arguing about? Well, Jesus, which one of us gets to sit at your right hand? Now, I want you to keep in mind, these weren't ungodly people. In fact, they were the ones that walked with Christ. They were with him on their journeys, but because they had not yet received the gift of the Holy Spirit, the things of their mind were stayed upon their own ambition. But see, Romans 8, 6 says, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. This is going to be a little bit different of a message today. See, When we distract our minds, the first place we always go to is what's in it for me. The first thing that we seek is how we can be made better. The first thing that we seek is the positions and the titles and the money and the power. And I'm not talking about people that don't know him. I'm talking about the church. See, there are people in the church that are so distracted by quote unquote serving God that they forget 
to serve God. When this starts to happen, you get people even in the church that are more interested in the power and the position of the church or what their standing is in the body of Christ. They begin to develop a lack of passion for seeing people come to know Christ and their entire theology changes based on finances or who's giving the most money or what their position and their title is and how much power they have in the body. There's no way for me to talk about this without stepping on toes. But if we just look around in today's society within the churches, we can see the hunger for power. We can see the hunger for money. It's right there. For a simple donation of $19.99, we can pray with you. Oh, you need a word from God? Just a small donation will get you your word from God. When we get distracted and we start thinking about our position, our title, we have lost the plot. It takes the Holy Spirit moving in and through us to remove that carnal mindset. It takes the Holy Spirit moving in and through us to not seek more and more. See, because if I recall correctly, it was the Holy Spirit that gave some to be pastors and some to be preachers, some to be evangelists and apostles. It was the Holy Spirit that was the one that was handing out positions. And I'm here to tell you this morning that there is not a single one of those positions that the Holy Spirit gives that is self-serving in any way, shape, or form. Because when the Holy Spirit gives you a position, it comes with a purpose. And that purpose does not include any gain. There are blessings that are associated with doing God's will. Please do not take what I'm saying out of context and say God wants everybody to be broke. There are blessings that come with doing the will of God, but God does not give us those positions or those responsibilities so that we can gain from them. God gives us those so that we can do one thing, reach the lost. See, when our focus changes from a carnal mindset to a spiritual mindset, we no longer need all the things of this world for our own self-satisfaction. But if we can reach even one person, just one, then our sense of accomplishment will go through the roof because it's not about us. You know, I I often think back to when, when I was going through the training to become a minister. And Pastor Herman and Shanika asked me, they said, well, what title do you want? I said, Tom.
And they informed me that the title isn't for me. That it's for other people. And I still struggled with it. The first few times people were calling me Minister Tom, I had, it, it sounded weird. And I'm not saying that I don't get carnally minded sometimes. I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. When you think about the calling that God has placed on your life. If the thoughts behind that calling have anything to do with how you can benefit. Then it's time to stop. And listen. And pray. And say, okay, God. I'm probably thinking about this wrong. Please give me the correct mindset. Help me to be spiritually minded. Help me to see not how this gift will benefit me, but how it will benefit every other person. How can I use this gift that you have given me to reach people that are lost? And when the distractions come in, slow down and think about what God is telling you. See, even that person that God gives a small business to. Yes, people can benefit from small businesses, but when that becomes their focus, what does that do to their business? It takes it out of the spiritual mindset into the carnal mindset. And then when their business fails, well, God, why didn't you bless my business? Well, maybe you weren't using the business the way God ordained you to use that business. Maybe you got more focused on how it benefits you rather than how it benefits the kingdom of God. Now, I I, I can't say this without going here. I can't clean this up. Most churches in the United States today have turned into businesses. And then start talking about, we don't know why the spirit ain't here. I know why the spirit ain't there. Scripture tells us why the spirit ain't there. For to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's Romans 8, 6. You can write that on your hearts. Because whenever you see the things around you dying off, it's time to take a look at the mindset of those things. Not necessarily your mindset towards them, but how those things are maturing. Are they maturing in a way that is glorifying God or patting the pockets? When we truly experience a changing of our mindset from carnally minded to spiritually minded, it is not possible to act the same. Let me say that again. When your mindset changes from carnal to spiritual, it is not possible to act the same. 
When your mind is changed, you think about things differently. You react to things differently. You handle situations differently. The way that you talk and interact with other people is going to be different. I'm going to give you an example. If we go a little bit further on in Acts chapter 2, in verse 14, it says, But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words, for these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. Later on down in verse 38, it says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off. Everyone whom the Lord God calls to himself And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Now, I want to talk about this for a couple of minutes, because I want you to realize that this was the sermon that Peter gave on the day of Pentecost. 49 days earlier, Peter was the very one standing in the square saying, Jesus, I don't know him. Nah. Who? Jesus, who? No, I don't know that guy. No, I saw you walking with him. No, 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 that wasn't me. Picture, it didn't happen, right? Wasn't me. I don't know this Jesus guy that you speak of. I was just standing in the square here. See, before Peter had the Holy Spirit on him, he still had the carnal mindset, and the carnal mindset was to save himself. The what's in it for me. He knew that if he said he knew Jesus, what would have happened? He could have been persecuted with Jesus at that time. So what does he do? He denies him. But as soon as he caught that Holy Spirit, he said, everybody, listen. This is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way through the Father. He gave a sermon to the very people that he was denying even knowing who Jesus was. The same people. But his mindset changed. He went from fear of persecution to I don't care what happens to me. These people need to know Christ. And as soon as that mindset changed, and as soon as his speech changed, as soon as the Holy Spirit came and dwelt with him, his own safety, his own ambitions, his own fears, his own worries, his own pains, sicknesses, his own garbage no longer mattered. The only thing that he cared about was people accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And the Bible records that 3,000 people came to know Christ. When we get the Holy Spirit, it's going to change our minds. But see, we still have flesh. And we still allow things to distract us. We still allow things to get in our heads. We still allow things that are carnally minded 
to start to take over sometimes. We start to dwell on this thing or that thing or, you know, I got a little bit of a pain in my neck. You know, God must not be with me today. We start to look at things from a carnal nature. But what God is telling us is that the Holy Spirit changes our mind. And sometimes when we start to go back to the carnal thinking, we need a refreshing. We need a renewing. And I believe that's exactly what was happening this morning. Whether it was one person or every person, there was somebody in this house that needed a refreshing of the Holy Spirit. And God delayed the service so that He could refresh that person. Because it is so important for us to remain spiritually minded. I'm going to be honest with you. Thursday night, I was not spiritually minded. I was not having a good day on Thursday. I needed that refreshing this morning too. I don't think I'm alone, but if I am alone, thank you God for hooking me up this morning. But it's so easy to get out of the spiritual mindset. A lot of times it only takes one thing to break that concentration. It takes one thing that we think that we plant these seeds in our mind and they take root and we just start going with it to the point where before we know it, we're right back into the carnal mindset. That's why the the Bible tells us to think on those things that are good, that are pure. Think on those things that help us to remain spiritually minded. So why is it so easy for us to get back into the carnal mindset? It's because of fear. A lot of us worry about things like rejection. Well, if I'm that Christian guy, then people won't want to spend time around me. Or persecution. Oh, well, if people know that I'm a Christian, they're going to watch everything that I do. And as soon as I slip, they're going to be right there to tell me, oh, look at you. I thought you were a Christian and now you're doing this or doing that. Or we fear that there's going to be a lack of approval and that people won't approve of us because we serve God. Well, what are people going to think of me? if they find out that I'm a Christian? What are people going to think of me if they know? How are people going to treat me? If you ever want to know what being truly sold out for Christ looks like, just do a Google search and look up what happened to the disciples. You see, they became so spiritually minded that there was only one thing that stopped them from proclaiming the gospel. And that was death. See, they became so spiritually minded that the mission that God gave them to spread his word to the ends of the earth, they carried out with fear of nothing not even fearing death. Because they knew that even in their death, they could reach people for Christ. 
You know, we go back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were cast into the furnace. And they said that that furnace was so hot that the guys that opened the door were burnt to death. And these three dudes just went strolling on in. They had no fear of what the outcome would be. They were not going to deny who God was. Yet we don't do it sometimes because we think someone's not going to like us. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether any of you like me or not. I would like y'all to like me, but it doesn't matter. Because the only words that I need to hear are well done, good and faithful servant. See, his approval trumps everybody else's disapproval. When our mindset changes, it has another effect, and that is that it changes our hearts. In Acts chapter 15, it said, And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, as he did to us, and he made no distinction between us and them having cleansed their hearts by faith. That same spirit that fell on the day of Pentecost is the same spirit that lives within each and every single one of us. And here's what I really want y'all to catch. And there suddenly came a from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Well, that mighty rushing wind does some things. When the atmosphere is full of things that are not of God, that mighty rushing wind can blow through that place and remove all of those things from the atmosphere. When that mighty rushing wind blows, it blows away the things that are not of God. When that mighty rushing wind blows, only the things that have a firm foundation can stand. And the only firm foundation that you can stand on when that wind blows is the foundation of Jesus Christ. Oddly enough, when I was studying this, my, my mind, my mind went some weird places. And the first place that it went, and y'all gonna have to forgive me for this, is the three little pigs. See, because when the enemy came and saw a weak foundation, He blew the house away. And that little pig ran. And the enemy came to the next house and saw a weak foundation. And he blew, but that foundation went bankrupt too. It wasn't until he got to the third one with a strong foundation that it stood. But see, in this situation, we're talking about the exact opposite thing happening. See, when the Holy Spirit blows, if the foundation is weak, you're blown away with the rest of the chaff. 
We have to have a strong foundation. We have to have a strong foundation so that when the Holy Spirit blows, that stuff that is on us, those things that are plaguing our minds, those things that we are using as distractions can be blown away. But we can still stand. See, a lot of people look at a lot of the trials and tribulations that we go through as being something of the enemy, but sometimes it is God trying to purify that area of our lives. But Pastor Herman always says, you know, the, de- the devil's like, everybody always picking on me. But I'm here to tell you a lot of times it is the Holy Spirit trying to reach you, trying to clear distractions from you that can put you into situations where it feels like you may be being attacked where all God is trying to do is give you a refreshing and remove the distractions from you. If you think about the process of refinement, when you, when you think of metal, how do they refine metal? Heat it up. They, they melt it down and they scoop out the impurities. And when it cools back down, it's in a more purified form. That is not a, a, a timid process. There is heat. It is a violent process that is used in purification of metals. So when we allow ourselves to become distracted by whatever those things are that distract us, whether it's work or a coworker or social media or music or that unhealthy relationship or that thing that we're going through that distracts us and starts to give us a carnal mindset, we need to make sure that our foundation is strong enough so that when the Holy Spirit blows through the situation, that that stuff that is distracting us gets blown away, but we can stand firm. However, some of us don't want the distraction gone. Because some of us have started to base our identity on the distraction. Some of us have gotten so wrapped up in our situations that we now claim them as who we are. We've got the firm foundation, but we don't want to let go of those things because we don't know who we are without those things. You don't believe me? How many of y'all know somebody that's gone from one abusive relationship right into another abusive relationship, right into another abusive relationship? Or how many people do you know that have gone from one bad situation into another bad situation into another bad situation or somebody that always has some physical ailment that is bothering them? Or if you ask somebody who they are and their answer is a short resume because they've now taken on the identity of where they work as opposed to who they are. Or who are you? I'm a designer. What happens when that situation is taken away from that person? They become lost because they feel like their identity is now gone. But see, when the Holy Spirit dwells in you, it's the only identity you need. Who are you? I'm a child of God. Nothing else 
matters. The number of zeros in your bank account doesn't matter. The position you hold at work, whether you're the lowest person on the, on the organizational chart or the highest person on the organizational chart, it doesn't matter. When you take your identity based on what God calls you to be, who God tells you you are, there is not a carnal thing that matters. You know, I, I like to use this example, but in, in the military, they do hand-to-hand -hand combat training. And I wasn't in the military, but my, my brother told me about this, and you know, I laugh every time I think about it. Because when you're in the training for hand-to-hand -hand combat, the rank doesn't matter. You just go in and you train. Because in a wartime situation, does the enemy care what your rank is? Does the enemy care whether you're a man or a woman? Does the enemy care about any of that? See, we are in a constant battle against the principalities and rulers of the dark world. Does, does that enemy care what kind of car you drive? No, he only cares about one thing, and that is to create separation between you and God. Because as soon as he creates that separation, then he can teach you anything. Like I, I hear a lot of people say, and I firmly agree with this, I don't want to try to talk anybody in to salvation. Because if I can talk you into salvation, somebody else can talk you out of it. See, salvation is a changing of your mind. It's a changing of your heart. It's a changing of your identity. When your identity changes, you have to take all of those old things that used to define your identity and forget about them. Because that's no longer who you are. And if you don't believe me, the scripture says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but he lives in me. We are new creations when we accept God. Those are the effects of the Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, it changes us. See, I used to think, about the disciples a lot. Be like, man, it'd be really cool to walk with Jesus. It would have been really cool to walk around following Christ. I think about that a lot. And the one that I think about a lot often when I'm thinking about this is Paul. Because see, Paul didn't necessarily have the opportunity to walk with Christ. But if, if Paul were to be thinking about that, he would probably look at me and say, Why? Why would it have been cool to walk around with Christ when you have Christ living on the inside of you? See, even in spiritual things, we can become carnally minded over spiritual things. It's so important for us to remember and to remind ourselves daily in some cases, hourly. At work, sometimes it's minute by minute. That we are new creations and that the Holy Spirit lives within us. So my, my challenge for you today is this. What are those things that you carry that have a carnal mindset? What are those things that you carry that have a carnal mindset that are part of your identity? Because your identity in Christ doesn't contain any of those. So seriously seek God and pray about those things. 
and then let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow those things off of you. See, because a lot of us look like we're carrying umbrellas in a windstorm, holding on to that umbrella for dear life. Sometimes God's just saying, let it go. I didn't give you this. It's not part of who you are. It's not part of your identity. It's not something that I want you to carry. It's not something that I want you to be distracted by. So let it go. And it's not going to be easy in some cases. In some cases, it's somebody that you hang out with. In some cases, it could be a relationship. In some cases, it could be uh, that position that you're seeking or something that is causing you to be distracted from who you are in Christ. Let him purify you. Let his spirit rest on you. In that you will find all the peace that you ever need. You will find all the joy that you ever need. You will find all of the satisfaction that you will ever need in him. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for your spirit, Father God. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would just blow through this place, Lord. Remove everything that is not of you. Continue to rest on us, God. Help each and every single person in here, Lord, to see those things that are getting in the way those things, Father God, that have a carnal mindset to them. And just help them, Father God, to eliminate those things from their lives. God, I lift you up in this place today. And I say, have your way, God. Have your way. I pray against fear. Fear of rejection, Father God. Fear of pure persecution. I pray against those things, God, that those would not be things that would plague our minds and that our only focus would be on you. God, we give you all the glory, all the power, and all the honor. In Jesus' name. to do, offering to do. But I just want you all to keep your minds fixed on him and let him work out the things that are plaguing you. It's not something that we can do. If we could do it, we wouldn't need him. So trust in him. Amen. And uh, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. As Minister Tom and I have been talking over the last week. so real. The Holy Spirit is real. And he's in everything that we do. And he's willing to be a part of it. But we have to do it for his glory. Amen. If there's an area in your life where you want to repent or you need prayer or you need the Holy Spirit to you to just slip up your hands. Is there something that you, you have that you're believing God for? And I don't know what it is, or I don't know if you have anything, but I want you, us all to begin to make ourselves available to you. We're going to finish out this series in probably a couple of weeks, but we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. But I just went
And so I want us to be praying. I want us to be praying for your loved ones. Be praying for people who, for whatever reason, feel misplaced or haven't received. Or I want us to just be praying. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for the people in your job. Pray for the things that are going on in your life. I want you to be praying. I want you to be praying. And I want you to be praying for our kids and praying for this neighborhood, this area. A lot of things are going on. But I believe that if we ask the Holy Spirit, if we ask the Father to make his presence manifested in this place, things can change. Amen. Whenever she got down and she she had already had my full attention. And it's not my place really to forgive her, but she had already had my love to forgive her. I believe that is what God wants for us now. When we bow down, we humble ourselves, and we just say, Holy Spirit, have your way. God, I know I did wrong. And the truth of the matter is, is the verdict was still out on her right now. Because some say that somebody gave her something that she shouldn't have. She didn't know she didn't have. But can you imagine a young girl just running in and just crying? And I believe that is what God wants for us. God wants us to cry. God wants us to turn away from those things that separate us from Him. we speak life over your people. Have your way, God, as minister to the last, minister before the word, before us, God. Refresh him, God. Let your wind of your Holy Spirit blow over him. And so, God, we honor you, God. We honor you, God. We honor you, Lord. And we praise you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to move in just a second into our offering and into our announcement. But before we do, I want to give you maybe like a couple of seconds just to greet somebody in the name of the Lord. But when you greet them this time, be a little bit different. I want you to ask them if they need prayer for anything. And just I want you to cover them and then what you're going to pray for. We're going to just take a couple seconds. I know the kids have already been dismissed, but take a
couple of seconds while they're transitioning to get, I don't know who has the call announcements and who has offering. I forgot all that. But sometimes the Holy Spirit will change things. And I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I get when the Holy Spirit changes things, I have to sit there for a while. So if you would stand, we're just going to greet somebody in the name of the Lord real quick. And while somebody's transitioning, we're going to do the announcements. But we bless you. In Jesus' name.